Hello, SB Hyena here. Welcome to my bonus video, a travel vlog of my summer holiday adventures where I left the comfort of the sunny beach in a hopeless search for where the English Channel meets the Strait of Dover. No, seriously, you can see the white cliffs of Dover to the north and then you can look to the west where the cliffs above Hastings are. East and south is nothing but sea. Or at least 20 miles until you get to the coast of France, but whatever. It is so surreal, and I love it! Alas, back in 2019, a young man named Dave was staying in Eastbourne at the time, thus making travel a little bit difficult. This is a story. Let's see how long the journey's going to take via public transport. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm here. Got to get the train all the way up to Rye. Then two buses, bus Canberra Sands up to Ed, then to Dungeness. How long is this going to take? And what time is it? It's I better get ready. Good job, most of my stuff is packed and ready. Uh, might need a... where's my bottle? Ah, there we go. Binoculars. Lots of sights to see. And a bottle of water. You know, they say it's a desert, so... I'm afraid you'll have to stay here for today. Sorry, friend. See, look at it. Look at the size of them rides. Lus was the self-evident reason behind Dave's emotional farewell to his hat. Only in the previous year, he had lost another beloved hat on the Eastbourne Pier. This feathered fiend is top of the list of suspects. Aside from the helium-induced pair of chipmunks in the background, there was nothing eventful about the train journey to Rye. I mean, it's a pleasant coastal view on a good day, which Dave just so happened to have chosen poorly. Alas, that came to a gradual halt past Hastings. So much for a trip to the seaside, huh? It's starting to rain! Yeah. I know a few folks who like their mutton rare, but this is ridiculous. From Rye, Dave continued by bus. The old medieval smuggler's town offered quite the impressive architectural facade. It was the last of civilization that he would ever see. 
the bus navigated the country lanes between the marshes of an untamed wilderness tainted by industrial relics. Mostly wind farms. Eventually it cleared up a little and he was greeted by the mighty sand dunes of Camber Sands. Apologies for the chipmunk noises in the background. I had to fast forward this segment to quicken the pace and avoid a strike for using other people's voices without consent. Had this bus been going at this actual speed, the driver would have caught quite the hefty speeding ticket. Turning inland past the lid ranges, Dave was greeted by miles of nothingness. A fake town swooped past, the shingle hued purple under stormy clouds. Rills and embankments surrounded empty houses with vacant facades. Latter steel pylons of every shape rose in the horizon, gathering in a legion of marching columns. Evil steely eyes peeked above a row of conifers, and here he arrived in lid. Ah, somehow this doesn't look like a dress. Uh, that's because I've got a few miles to go. From here, Dave caught the next bus. Over an inland lake, three monoliths arose from the wastes. Ominous and foreboding. It was Dave's intention to do a voiceover as he filmed. Alas, the wind was so strong he could barely hear his own voice. when he ran out of battery. He was never seen again. Yeah, this unfortunate soul who had attempted to film a video of Dungeness, albeit without catching much footage of Dungeness, had disappeared without a trace. In retrospect, this may have been for the best. After further investigation, I had discovered the one piece he had tried and failed to show. A murky pool of water, almost barren and empty, brimming with sludge, algae and looking none too appealing. If only he had seen the warning signs. <sighs> Nearly there. Can you see it? In the distance? Uh, see what, Asp? Why are you bring me up here anyway? I'll explain. Okay. Don't know if anyone can see this, but there's this huge building on the horizon. Somewhere past this blue car. Look up from that blue car, 
and yeah I think that's it so I've got my sunglasses on and I can't see through my uh, screen and also the sun is blurring out as well so I don't know if I've got it if I haven't I'll probably delete this uh, might be better if I just show you on a photo but that's what I want to get tomorrow if I'm lucky Dungeness <sighs> wish me good luck uh, I'm coming too got anything better to look at here's a photo not the best quality, but at least I got a better focus. Next morning, up and early, we go straight from bread, I mean bed, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> to the train station. The dawn seeps above the horizon, and I get a fresh sense of longing. Was that Scruff neglecting to take a shower before we went? Excuse me. Anyway, let's skip the unnecessary exposition and fast forward this baby. Our stop was half mile back. My bad. Anyway, the beach is nice and the breeze is a lot gentler. So let's say we catch some rays before investigating, hey? Uh, you could try spraying some deodorant on your pits, lose some of that flab. Fine. Not hope you can hear me, but I'm in land at Dungeness. There seems to be like a little stream. Uh, Scruff, could you please change the settings? People are going to start thinking that I ate too many baked beans for breakfast. <laughs> Excuse you. Uh, well, no, maybe this water got trapped here when the tide went out. Well, it doesn't look like the tide reaches it when it's back here. So, why water is flowing here? Well, it seems to be flowing. That could be the wind. It could just be rain for a while, though. That's a mystery. There seems to be a little lake here as well. Yes, sorry. So that's not really sure. Right. So there's a little stream there, but there's no problems. So 
this may have been it. And if it is, it is now when Dave ran out of footage, in more ways than one, it was something of a blessing in disguise. Dungeness is a private estate. People live and work here, and are entitled to their privacy. This is something I can understand, being on the spectrum, for I do not like people invading my personal space, even before the pandemic, I was very uncomfortable with strangers getting too close to me. Especially if I'm, say, commuting in the London Underground or shopping in a supermarket. I do my best to keep other people out of frame, both visually and audibly. Hence the squeaky chipmunk noises. Apologies to anyone unfortunate enough to be sat next to yours truly. There is also a very delicate ecosystem. So I did my best to avoid stepping on any flora and kept to certain paths and access points from the beach to the main road. So for those reasons, I am only using these images and uh, I hope I don't get struck for that because these are um, well-known sites like um, Derek Jarman's Prospect Cottage and the Lighthouses. <sighs> it's a shame I can't share a selfie. Come on, just the one? Fine. Oi! Stop taking her photos! <laughs> we should be safe here. So long as we don't do any filming. As we went past the power station, I started to worry. We didn't dare catch this on film, but at one point, an entire group of employees walked out of a building and seemed to be marching toward the gates like robots. I thought I could hear an alarm. As we walked on down the beach, we kept looking over our shoulders in fear that one of them might appear behind us. Oi, that was scary. Yeah, let's not do that again before any more Doctor Who monsters come after us. Excuse me, where was my Tommy? So, are we going to get back? Um, there's a mini train up top there, near the lighthouse. Fancy a go? Uh, don't it go like one mile per hour? Oh, come on, Scruff. Use your imagination. Fast forward. <laughs> uh, where are we? Um... Way off, we got low tide and a phallic looking symbol. Awkward, you got us lost. Yeah, I guess I did. Don't worry, we'll fast forward. I thought you said fast forward. This looks like a horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> 